Hello everyone. So in this video, we are going to go over how to use Google Slides as a graphic design tool. First, the project goals for the U Starter Kit project are to create a collage that includes three photos from each of the categories, things you like, things you do, things that are important to who you are. So in total, you should have at least nine photos, but you can choose as many photos as you would like. You also must have a background, captions for your photos. You're gonna experiment with format options and you're gonna include repeated shapes which will create unity in your collage. First, let's learn how to add photos to your collage. There are a number of different ways to add photos in Google Slides. One way is to go to insert, Go to image, upload from your computer if you have a picture already on your Chromebook, or you can search the web. Another way to add photos is to come down here to the explore button here, click on that. And this will open up a search window that you can look for pictures online. Remember your photos should be clear pictures, not blurry. So look for pictures that are large. Now, what if you wanna take a picture of your dog, for example, and put it into your slides, or if you have a picture on your phone that you wanna include? In order to do that, you will need to download the Google Slides app to your phone. Once you have the Google Slides app downloaded, you'll see there's a plus sign. Once you have the slide open for the assignment, there's a plus sign. If you tap there, then you'll see it says image. You can tap there, and you'll be able to either choose a photo that you've already taken, or you can um, choose a photo, um, you can take a photo with your camera at that time. Another way to add original photos to your collage is to use your Chromebook to take photos. To find the camera app on your Chromebook, you can go down to this bottom circle here. And um, if you click on that, then you will find the camera app, or you can search for the camera app, the icon looks like this. Sometimes it's already there available for you. Once you click on that, you'll see a window that will open up and that will allow you to take pictures with your Chromebook. All pictures that you take on your Chromebook save to your Google Drive. So you should be able to insert it from your Google Drive. So, okay, so you start here with a slide. Now notice all of these tools up here in the menu. There's transitions, themes, layout, background, and then there's shape tool, line tool, text box. Also another way to insert images. So I'm gonna click on this, insert image. I'm going to search the web I'm gonna choose my first image for my collage, and I'm going to be putting in some flowers. So for this project, I'm gonna start with some daisies. My mom really loves daisies, so the flowers kind of remind me of my mom and as well as something I like. I'm going to shrink the photo. Now look what I did to shrink the photo. I grabbed the corner. I did not grab any of the side handles. If you grab the corner, your photo will resize in um, proportion. If you grab the side handle, what happens? It gets a smooshed or stretched out. I'm gonna press Control Z to go back, or I can press the back arrows. Okay, now I got my picture resized from the corner. Big pet peeve of mine is when people resize pictures from the side handles. Always use the corner. I can change the angle of my picture. Let's say I wanna like, I don't know, make it a little more creative. I can change the angle of my picture. Let's say this is too big. I don't want all of these flowers. I can crop my picture. One way to do that is to double click. You'll see these black bar handles become available. If you select that and then drag it, it will cut off part of the picture. Sometimes if you don't select it properly the first time, like maybe you kind of like are a little bit on the outside, it will do that, right? It'll smush your picture because you didn't get the, um, the black bar handle. You definitely need to get the black bar handle to crop. I'm going to undo that. You can also get to the crop tool by going in, um, clicking this, tool at the top. Okay, so I got my picture. I'm gonna crop it a little bit. Boom. And I'm gonna crop it a little bit over here. Boom. Oops. Undo. 
crop it. Okay, and I press enter and now I have a smaller version of that picture. I'm gonna find another picture and for the sake of this demonstration, I'm gonna do another flower. Oh, actually, I'm gonna do this, which is some let or some cabbage. Oh, this image is not available, dismiss. That will happen sometimes. So I'll search for another picture. Let's see, I'll go with this one instead. Okay, so I've got that picture. So what happens if I put my pictures in and I'm like trying to fit them all in and now one is behind this one, but I want, so this new picture I just put in is on top of this other picture. So what happens when you try to arrange your pictures? So for example, I just put a new picture in and you can see it is on top of the old picture that I just put in, they, they're in layers. In order to change the order of your pictures, you can select the picture, press Alt and click or right click if you have a mouse, and then you'll see it says order. You can send this picture to the back, so now it'll be behind the other picture, or you can alt and click or right click and bring it to the front. So now I have the picture in front. So think about how you wanna layer your pictures together. I'm gonna push this guy back, right click, send to back, or alt click, send to back. If I wanna select multiple pictures at the same time, you see how this guy's selected because it has the um, blue handles on the outside. If I wanna select this daisy picture as well, I can hold down the shift button and click and now both of the pictures are selected. This is great if I wanna resize them all at the same time Remember, pull from that corner. I can also add borders to the pictures all at the same time. So I can go up here to the border, excuse me, the um, border color tool, click on that. And maybe I want them all to have like this crazy neon color and I want the border to be thicker so I can change that. And maybe I want it to be like a dashed line. No, I don't really like that. Maybe a dotted line. No, I think I'm gonna leave it like that. Okay, so you can definitely change the border of your pictures, change the, um, the angle of them, resize them, crop them, and change the layering of them so that some are in front of the others. And don't forget that tool to select multiple pictures. So if you hold shift down, click and click, they'll all select at the same time. Okay, so I've got some pictures in there. Now the other requirement, so you're gonna be doing nine pictures. The other requirement is to find a background. Hmm, okay, so how do I add a background? Well, you're gonna to go to this tool here, click background, you can choose just a color if you want a straight color for the background. Maybe I want to do this color. Or you can choose an image if you have an image on your computer. Or maybe you want to do like a gradient. Sometimes a gradient can be a cool option. I'm going to do this one. Oh, that's a little crazy. I'm going to go with this one instead. All right, maybe I'll keep mine kind of subdued since I have such a um, bright border. So add a background. That's another um, thing that's important. The other requirement for the project was to add some captions. So we're going to use the text box tool that's up here. Click on that. You can click and drag to create a text box. The text box can be changed um, in the following ways. You can change the internal color of the text box. So maybe I'll make it the same color as my border. You can add a border to your text box and you can still also change the, the size of the border. When you type in the text box, so let's say um, daisy flowers, okay, so daisy flowers. So now you can change how it's centered in the text box. You can highlight the text and then change the font. There are so many fonts available in Google Slides. So you can select from what's already there, or you can go to more fonts if you want to try to select another font from there. I like this permanent marker font. I'm gonna use that one. Um, and then you can still also change the color of the text. So let's say I wanna make my text gray. Okay, so there's lots of options on how to change the captions and add captions to your photos. Okay, we got two more things to show you and then we're all done for today. So the next thing is the format options. When you click on a picture, you'll notice a new menu comes up. It says format options. If you don't have a picture selected, you won't be able to see that menu. So click on a picture, format options will come up over on the side here. Now here is a place for you to start to change 
the images that you included. You can recolor the images. Like let's say, for example, I really think it would be cool to have everything in black and white. Maybe that's the aesthetic I'm going for. Um, or maybe I want to keep going with this like neon looking color. Actually, I kind of like this black and white color. I'm going to leave it like that. You can adjust the pictures. You can make them transparent. So let's say I have this transparent and then I put, um, and I have to layer this behind and to back. So I put the daisies behind this one and now all of a sudden there's like this really interesting kind of like layered effect going on. You can mess around with the transparency. I'm going to bring it back up for my purposes. You can change the brightness and the contrast. Some other cool format options that you should experiment with are drop shadow. Um, for this one, if you want to include um, a drop shadow, you can mess with the sliders down here. You can change the distance, the blur of it. Maybe you want a really sharp drop shadow. Maybe you want it to be a little blurry. You can change the color. Maybe add like a really bright color. I'm going to go with this. Okay. Well, actually, I'm going to change my mind. I want it to be a little more obvious. I'm going to do that. Okay, so you can do drop shadows. Um, and then the other format option is reflection. So you can see I just um, selected that, and now there is a reflection of the picture that I included, and it changed the size and the distance and lots of different ways to experiment with that. So I'm going to get rid of that. So your collage should have a background, captions for your photos, and each photo you should experiment with format options. The last thing that you need to include in your collage is repeated shapes. Now in order to create, uh, the reason why we are including repeated shapes is so that your collage has some unity so that it looks like it all belongs together. So I'm gonna go up here to the shape tool. I'm gonna click on that and there's lots of different options, different types of shapes. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go with a star. I'm gonna select that, I'm gonna click and drag. And you can see as you drag it, it kind of changes the shape of it. I'm gonna go with that. Same thing about changing the color. I'm actually gonna leave the inside that color, but I wanna change the border. And I'm gonna go with the same kind of border that I've been working with for my other colors. Okay, so now I've got this star and you can see there's this little orange thing here. Take a look and depending on what you choose, what shape you choose, you might have options to um, change the shape of the actual tool. Whoops. So here we go, we've got our star. Now, how do I create repeated stars? This is gonna be a good tool to learn how to use. I'm going to make mine a little bit bigger there. Okay, I'm going to select the, the star. I want to copy it and then I want to paste it so I can press. Um, if you are using a Chromebook, you press control C. That will copy it and then control V will paste it. Now you have another star. Remember I said it, we, we needed to have repeated stars. If you see in Google Slides, there's like um, this red line that comes up. That's a guideline to show you as uh, if the stars are lined up properly. So maybe I want the stars to be in line with each other. And maybe I wanna copy both of these stars. So I'm gonna hold down that shift button, click on this other star. Now they're both copied. Now I can press control C and control V. And now it's given me more than one star. And I'm going to put those together maybe like that. Now I can press shift and um, select these other two stars, control C, control V. And I'm moving on all these, look how many stars I'm making, it's amazing. All right, now what if I wanna select, there's another way to select multiple shapes. If I click on the outside and then drag a box around them, I can select them all also. Okay, so I want you to experiment with repeated shapes. Maybe I would then copy this, paste it and put it over here as well. And you could see how if you um, add multiple versions of shapes in the background or to your collage, it starts to look like the collage belongs together, it goes together. I'm gonna send this one to the back as well so it's behind my caption. And maybe on this one I was gonna change the orientation, so I've got that. And maybe for this one I wanna make it really big. So I'm grabbing the, as long as all those stars are selected, you won't have a problem doing this. Oh, and maybe I want to go to my format options and I want to give them a little drop shadow. You can add drop shadows to those too. Okay, so the, the goal here when you are creating your collage is to definitely get those nine photos in, 
but also I want you to think of it like an artwork. How can you change the background, add some captions, experiment with those format options, and make sure you're included, re including repeated shapes to make it look like it all goes together. All right, I look forward to seeing what you create.